Okay, so let's talk about Hellboy. Go on then. Um, this is a new sort of rebooty adaptation of the Dark Horse comic series, which was uh, created by Mike Mignola and has previously, very famously, and also very recently been adapted into two films by Guillermo del Toro in 2004 and 2008. Now, initially, this version started life as the third part of the del Toro trilogy. Oh, really? Yeah, so that was the original plan was to make a third Del Toro Hellboy film, but the project went under a direction that Del Toro was not particularly interested in pursuing. So he departed, so as did the original Hellboy, uh, Ron Perlman. So this left this sort of vacuum where it's taken 11 years to to, to work out how to uh, to fill it. And it has been filled, uh, in, in in theory at least, uh, by uh, Neil Marshall, the director of Dog Soldiers and the Descent, and who had latterly moved into... At television, he directed two enormous sort of series climaxing episodes of Game of Thrones, the Battle of Blackwater, mm -hmm. and the other big battle whose name escapes me, but the end of season four. So he 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 done. He's got this kind of you know feel for gutsy comic horror, but also for this kind of grim, bleak spectacle as well. Yeah. So in theory, great director yeah, to, to choose for choice. this kind of project. And um, in in place of um, uh, of, of of the original Hellboy, Ron Perlman, you have David Harbour, who's who played the burly police chief in Stranger Things, who's significantly burlier for this role. He's he's bulked up. Now, the issue with this is Del Toro's approach to this material is basically to turn Hellboy into this sort of postmodern Frankenstein-like character. And there's you know there's there's knuckleheaded action in there, but there's also this fairy tale like glamour to it, and this real kind of searching pathos. Like for me, the defining scene of those uh, Del Toro films is the one in which Hellboy and Ape Sapien sit down, uh, you smile because you know what I'm going to say, in the library with a six pack of Mexican beer and sing along to Barry Manilow, right? So yeah. this is not a kind of a standard action fantasy blockbuster beat, mm -hmm. but it beautifully encapsulates what those Del Toro films are about. The tone of this is completely different. It is kind of incredibly relentlessly gory, very cynical, very foul-mouthed, in a way that makes me think that people saw the success of Deadpool at Fox and oh, thought, OK, so this kind of uh, nasty, you know, in America, R-rated is the term that's often used, this sort of nasty, cynical, um, sort of very snipey, jokey tone is doing well at the moment. So we need to recalibrate this character in order to fit that. So yeah. you can kind of compare it to the Guillermo del Toro films in which respect it's a staggering failure. Or you can judge it on its own merits in which respect it's a staggering failure. Um, <laughs> the, the, the premise is that um, it's actually set before the Del Toro films. And so you have uh, Hellboy being brought across the UK initially to help out with um, hunting down giants in the New Forest. Uh, but he gets embroiled in this broader plot that involves uh, the resurrection of an Arthurian uh, sorceress played by Mila Jovovich, of course. Um, and uh, he also gets another chance to, to feud with his adopted father who's played by Ian McShane. And we can listen in to one of those feuds in this clip. Welcome back to the land of the living. Hardly a scratch left. You heal fast. Where am I? Bacon, eggs and black pudding, do you? You look like you could use a proper English breakfast. Go on. Sit down before you fall down. How did I get here? Man with a van. Actually, four men. You owe me 300 quid, by the way. I'm sorry, do I know you? Beware the Jabberwock, my son. The jaws that bite. The claws that catch. Beware the, the Jub Jub bird. And shun the fruit Frumious. bandersnatch. Alice. Little Alice Monahan. Not so little Alice Monahan. Now, if you're thinking Ian McShane sounds different, <laughs> things, that's because that's actually Sasha Lane uh, from American Honey, who's uh, cast as Alice Monaghan, who's the, the, the sidekick me? character. Now, Sasha Lane, amazing in American Honey. Oh, my Honey, God, blew my mind. A masterpiece. In that film. Now, very talented. Her talents do not include English accents, I have to say. The accent in this is a sticking point from the very start. And I think you can see in the way that this film, you know, I think last time we we were on together, we were talking about Bohemian Rhapsody. And you the were way talking, that, I was talking about Bohemian Rhapsody. And, and you really agreed with me at the end, I sensed, even though you said you didn't. Um, you did Definitely agree, didn't. Uh, deep down. But when you look, you know, when you watch Bohemian Rhapsody, you can see that that film is a salvage job. The way it's been edited is kind of twitchy and incoherent. And when you know that the film needs to go to a close-up of someone because you need their reaction to something, for example, it will cut to a wide shot or an overhead or something like that. 
This constantly happens in Hellboy. The performances, I mean, Sasha Lane's performance is not good. None of the performances in it really are very good. Ian McShane, he's reading these lines like he's just like clapped high on the script five seconds before he's come on camera. I mean, he does the opening monologue and it sounds like he's never seen it before in his life. <laughs> he's just sitting down to read it off the top of his head. But the performances, not good as they are, are totally stitched up by the way in which this film has been put together, which is basically bordering on incoherent. There are barely two scenes that flow together properly, right? And let alone that, in, in the actual internal structure of the scenes, as I say, there's a moment where they, they arrive at this uh, massacre, Sasha Lane's character, who is uh, psychic. She comes in and says, you know, something terrible happened here. And then, you know, the camera sort of prepares for a big, you know, a sort of a, a, a pan into her face to show us the kind of uh, the, the horror. Uh, but, you know, she's sensing what's happened there. Mm. And instead it cuts to this overhead shot for no reason. So presumably because the performance wasn't there or the, you know, it, it, it didn't, for whatever reason, what happened on set wasn't able to be cut into something coherent. So it's just a total and relentless mess. The tone is also, the fact that it starts out just so relentlessly nasty and horrible, and it just does not let up. That's deadening over time, you know, 20 minutes of that, and you just kind of, you've been shown all these kind of horrible, revolting creatures, and you mm. think, yeah. <laughs> There's like one that stands yeah. out, which is the Baba Yaga witch character. Yeah. I don't know if you, you recall this one. That scene has nothing to do with anything, anything. around it. I think the only reason it's in there is because it works. Um, but this is a, a point at which Hellboy visits the, the, the witch Baba Yaga in her house, which yeah. is on this kind of big walking... Uh, chicken legs thing, which is part of, you know, like the Hellboy comic books, it's tapping in interestingly to different folklore ideas. Uh, there's another thing with changelings as well. It's Sasha Lane's uh, character when she was a baby, she was rescued by Hellboy because she was taken away and replaced with a changeling. So it's using all these, uh, you know, potentially interesting ideas, but the result is just catastrophic. Now, when a film ends up like this, and theoretically, people who would have made a good job of it are involved you start to ask some questions or wonder some things. So uh, why is it ended up like this? I don't think it's a coincidence that on the publicity tour for this film, Neil Marshall has been nowhere to be the seen. Director, he yeah. wasn't He wasn't at the premiere, I don't believe. Uh, he's certainly not done a single interview for it. I've not seen any clips of it. I'm talking about it online. It just smacks of muddling kind of interference, being pulled in five different directions at once and scenes... If you can't cut a scene together, it's because the direction on the day has been all over the place, possibly competing voices in there somewhere. Mm. It's just awful. I mean, it's 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 kind of... I don't know if Guillermo del Toro will be relieved or just sad to see the legacy <laughs> of this character tarnished so badly. But, you know, go back to the del Toro films. If you haven't seen them, seek them out because they are beautiful. They're such a wonderful treatment of how you do a monster movie in the 21st century. And this just is not. <laughs>